Hi, everybody. This is your old pal, Uncle Hondo, your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer on Sports Illustrated and the host of the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. It's great to be with you this afternoon. Um, literally, I just walked out of the locker room visiting with players, been here at the facility all day, got a lot to talk to you about. I do every day, but I got a lot to talk to you about today. I want to start because I had several people reach out to me on something I said yesterday. Um, and they seem to take it in a little bit different than how I meant it. When Tyree Wilson originally got injured, the Raiders got some good news that it wasn't structural um, <clears throat> is what they thought. And uh, it wasn't going to be a long-term, you know, there were some that even at some point were early on, not in the process, but early, maybe optimistic. Okay. If it's not structural, maybe, one week or whatever. Um, and I told yesterday, I, I, I think I think it may be a little bit more than that. Obviously, he didn't practice today. I don't expect him to play this weekend, so it's a little bit more. But some took it as me acting as if it were catastrophic. I don't believe that in the least bit or he would be on IR. So I think it'll be less than four games because IR, um, it's a minimum of four games. So I'm I'm thinking, and this is purely Hondo reasoning, probably by the Browns game, maybe by Carolina. I think that's a little too optimistic. But um, by the Browns game, uh, I certainly think that's a possibility because you got Ravens and Carolina, Browns, and you know, or even the next week. But that's kind of I want to make sure there's clarification to what I said because it's imperative to me that I bring you the best information. Um, nothing else on Coons. So we wait. Um, I really hit something yesterday. And I, in fact, I had a player, um, who saw yesterday's podcast mentioned to me that they appreciated. I brought up the pissed off mantra of this team. Um, I just got done moments ago talking with a bunch of the linemen. That's kind of where I like to congregate because that's where football games are won. I certainly talk to everybody, but, um, and I was visiting with Andre James. I think it's an interview you're going to really like. We're going to have up tomorrow, but Adam Butler, as I've told you in the past, is one of the most respective, respected gap integrous defensive linemen in the NFL. Now, I explained yesterday what that is, but it's literally the space between the center and the and the guard or the guard and the tackle. Those are gaps. Literally just think of gaps in the offensive line. And so a gap um, disciplined person is that they go up the field and stay in their gap. Now, let me tell you why this is really, really important. If you're going against a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning or even an Aiden O'Connell, where guys don't, their game is not a game of mobility, you want to, you can go after him. So Aiden gets the ball, rolls to his left. You can leave your gap and go pursue um, because you're not worried about him demonstrating the athleticism of a. I mean, all over the place, like a sonic hedgehog um, or in, or like a pinball. Ding, 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 ding. I don't even know if you most of you even know what a pinball machine is, but ding, 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 ding. And so um, you have to stay in your gaps. Now, this is why you're going to hear the term a lot, a cage. Keep um, Lamar Jackson in a cage because he'll move around. He'll go to his left. He'll go to his right. He'll go backwards. The guy does everything. He's just incredibly talented. He's one of the most talented players in the NFL. I think he's a top uh, four quarterback, and you can make an argument between two and four anywhere with Lamar Jackson, and I would tell you you're, you're right. Smart guy. So when you look at this ball club and you study this ball club and you um, look at what they do and then how they do it, talking specifically about the Ravens, um, you got to go up. And so there's times, and I even talked to Patrick Graham about this today. You can go watch that video or listen to that audio because I've already put it out there. You you just don't go for the quarterback. You want your defensive ends to come around and kind of encirculate him. 
You want your tackles to stay in their gaps. Why? So he can't cut back through an empty gap. So let's say he rolls to his left and everybody chases him. Well, pretty much everybody he's going to be able to get away from. And then, bam, he's in a gap where you're supposed to be and nobody's there and you're gone. And that's a big deal. So you want to stay in your gap, keep him in the cage so he doesn't have a, a running lane. Now, a couple of things that are very important. When you're pressing upfield, you can't have Lamar at your shoulder or behind you. If you do, you're going to lose. So when the defensive ends are coming upfield, you want to stay parallel with them. You can still zero in on them, but you want to parallel with them. When you're a, a defensive tackle, you got to keep them in front of you. That's what gap integrity means. And I was talking with Andre after our interview and uh, just about how good Butler is and how it makes them better in practice. And he said that he's tremendously good and it, it, it gives them a good look every week because you're going against a guy who's so gap sound. Now that doesn't help Andre against Lamar because they're both offense, but I just wanted to explain to you that, that it just gives you a good demonstration of why that is so important in this league, that, that gap integrity. Um, another thing that stood out with me with Andre is I told you Andre Dylan and Thayer all played well. Thayer played on Sunday like an all-pro. He was phenomenal. Um, Dylan played really well, and so did Andre James. And I talked with Andre about the fact he played so well. And are you know are you able to appreciate it even though the team lost? And he's like, no. Uh, Dylan Parham the same way. You know, he's like, I'm a team guy. And so who cares what I did? We didn't win. Um, there's an edge to this locker room right now. Um, and I thought it funny, though, when one of the players said, you know, thank you for mentioning that. Because I think it was important that people know we're mad and they're mad. And I, I'm just telling you. I think the worst thing for the Ravens may have been a loss for the Raiders. They're on a mission to prove something. Now, I still expect them to lose. And you may say, well, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, it totally matters. Because if they come back and, 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 you know, whip off four straight wins and they're sitting at four and two. I just, I, I, this is a team that is maturing and they're taking on the identity of their coaches. Now I talked with Patrick Graham today and I told you you can go watch that video or listen to the audio about Adam being so gap sound. And he kind of laughed and said, you know, cause he's a tinkerer. He's a, a football savant. As someone said to me, if you could sit down and talk football with anybody in the national football league for four hours, who would you pick? And I said to them, anyone, player or coach, they're like, anyone. I said, Patrick Graham, not even close. Patrick Graham just drops knowledge and that guy's players love him. He's such a great person. And, and we were talking today about the gap and being gap sound and how you cannot beat. I mean, it's hard to beat Lamar if you are gap sound. You can't beat him if you're not. This is an exceptional talent. This is a very good talent. And so I think the Raiders are going to be trying some things. I expect that we're going to see some more five-man front. Um, and think about that. We've seen from Patrick, three-man front, four-man front, five-man front. The thing is with the Ravens, the way you beat them is to take away their running game. Now, some people misconstrue that to think that Lamar Jackson is a poor passer. That is not the case. He's very good. Where he is bad is 
when he is rushed. Now, Patrick Mahomes, he's just a unicorn because when he's rushed, he'll throw the ball behind his back. He'll sidearm it. That guy just has very few flaws in his game. Lamar is an elite quarterback. But like the rest of the quarterbacks, including Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, if he's rushed, that's where you beat him. So I expect a lot of five. Um, we know the Ravens like to do a lot of 11 and 12 personnel, which is you know one running back, one tight end, one running back, two tight ends. And so we know what Derrick Henry does. They're not going to run Derrick Henry 45 times on Sunday. It's not what they do. He's not at that age in his career. But don't misconstrue that as he's at a bad place in his career. He's still an elite guy, and they've got more than one back. But when he runs, he's a tank. I'll tell you a great story about Derrick Henry. Um, I don't have this guy's permission, although I don't think he would care. But since I don't have it, I won't use a name. But I have a friend that went against him. And um, he literally, this is a big lineman, much bigger than Derek. And Derek hit him. And he told me, I literally felt like I got hit by a tank in all of my life in football. Nobody's hit me like Derek Henry. And he goes, he's a flipping running back. So this is where you got to be gaps on. You have to keep your shoulders straight. You're not going to bring Derek Henry down with just your arms. You've got to use leverage. You've got to, you know, wrap up, hit, roll your hips and drive. It's a matter of force. It's pure force. If, if you like physics like I do, um, you can just start calling Derrick Henry. His nickname is the physicist. If you don't operate in the world of physicism, you're not tackling him. He's, he's a beast. In my opinion, he, he, we haven't seen a running back like him probably since Earl Campbell, probably. I was thinking Jerome Bettis, but I don't think Jerome hit as hard as Derek does. But Derek's also got some incredible speed. He's just he's just a freak of nature. And so the Raiders are going to have to stay extremely gap sound. Um, but I like where they're at. They feel like they have something to prove. Now, I talked with uh, Luke Getze today at his press conference, and I said to him, Al Davis, built this franchise with the motto, we don't take what the defense gives us, we take what we want. And I understand you only have one game, so it's not like we can judge your offense. But how important is it for this team to be aggressive? Like Al said, I thought, and the reason I'm even bringing this up, I had a bunch of people email me, you know, Hondo, what do you, what do you think about that? Felt like he was dodging your question. I didn't think he was dodging it at all. And I would tell you if I thought he was. I, I think he what you took as dodging was he's embarrassed. I, I When you're an offensive coordinator and you're at fourth and one, down six, in the fourth quarter on the other team's side of the field and your coach doesn't go for it, I don't care what your coach says. And I don't think AP's a liar, but I also don't think, well, I know for a fact he doesn't throw his people under the bus. I don't care what AP says the reason he had all the good reasons for punting was because he didn't believe his offense could get it. Does anyone in the sound of my voice believe if he was certain his team would get that yard that he wouldn't have gone for it? Of course he would have. I mean, come on, it don't take a donkey brain at midnight and an old Tim Barn to figure that one out. I mean, that's just reality. I mean, it's literally just reality. And I didn't take it as him dodging anything. I, I think he was embarrassed. And quite frankly, if I were an offensive coordinator in that position, I would have been embarrassed. Quite frankly, if I was any member of the offense, that would have embarrassed me, especially since his entire track record is predicated on attack, attack, attack. So, I thought his answer was very good. I also asked him a question um, that, well, just sticking in that vein about the attack. I think just based on what I'm seeing in the locker room, 
I think the Raiders are going to look different. I don't know if that translates into a win, so I'm going to stick with my prediction for a loss. I, I just I have 10 things that I judge a game on, and uh, coming into this game, I had Baltimore with a 7-3 advantage. I now have it 6-4, um, so I'm going to leave it, picking it, but I think it's going to look like a total different team. And I'm going to say this. If the Raiders win, I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised. Just the way, the mentality, the locker room, um, I just, it, it, it has that feel. They're an angry group of men. And they feel it. And they know it. And they get it. They understand it. And so I think right now Raider Nation should be looking forward to this football game. Um, it's a big test on the road, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, in a very hostile environment, very hostile. This is going to be a good test for this team, a very good test. I don't think the Raiders, and there are no silver linings in the NFL. Let's just make that abundantly clear. A loss is a loss, and, and at this level, they all suck. But I think they can walk out of there as 0-2 and steal, especially if they've corrected things, I and, and feel very good about where they're headed as a team. Colton Miller's going to continue to get better. Um, I had a lot of people, because I talked about Colton a lot yesterday, say to me, how long until I expected Colton to be 100%, just cardio and all of that? I would say by the Browns game, the Browns game, I would expect him to be there. You know, it gives him three games to get into where he needs to be. And then after that, I think Colton will be fine, but I think he's going to be better this week than he was last. And I think he's going to be a lot better next week than he was this week. So I think there just is a lot of room for optimism. I want to talk about one other thing. Um, I tweeted out the other day that if the Raiders could get a deal, um, with Yannick Ngakwe, be a good addition. I think they feel good. Uh, you know, they brought in a, a, a pass rusher the other day that, you know, um, they knew from the draft process. I think they really like him. I think they like a little bit of his twitch and think, you know, maybe a change of scenery. Maybe, you know, he struggled a little bit with a couple of teams. Maybe a change of scenery and some some good coaching can coach him up. But he's very talented. Very, very talented. In fact, um, I heard two people say, well, remember what people thought about Jack Jones. So let's keep an eye on the young DE that they brought in and, and watch where that goes and kind of how that develops. And we'll see a lot there. Um, but because of that and then bringing him in and the fact that I don't I don't think Ty Tyree is going to go on uh, injured reserve which at the time I wrote that, I think there was you know some potential concern. But now that I really don't get the feel that he's going to go on IR, IR, I think the Raiders are going to sit tight at defensive end. Now let me tell you why that's really, really important. It keeps them with tremendous flex space on the cap with the hope and anticipation some young guys are going to play well and down the road earn some uh, extensions. Now, if they're able to extend a guy during this, this this business year and it's still on this year, they can put it against this year's cap money. So, you know, if you give they're sitting here today with, I'm going to guess, 34, 33 million dollars. And so if they give a guy, a, you know, let's say they give a guy four years, 40 million and maybe the guy on the open market would have got four years, 45 million, or four years, 50 million. But let's just say it was four years, 50 million, 12 and a half million a year. But only the first two years are, are you know, guaranteed. They may go up and say, hey, we'll offer you 10 million a year, which is 40, but we'll write you a signing bonus, you know, for 25 million. So you get your money now, but you're also in Nevada with no state income tax. That's a huge deal. I'm not getting political, by the way. The last time I mentioned state income tax, 
I had multiple people ask me not to get political. I'm not getting political at all. It's reality. It's reality. I don't know a lot of people that like paying taxes. Let me just tell you, I, I love to live in America and I'm proud of it and I pay my taxes, but I'm just, I think everybody would like to pay as little as possible, at least that I know would feel that way. And, you know, wealthy players are the same. So I think that opens a door and an opportunity for them to go and give a signing bonus, which is where in the past when the Raiders were not financially well off, they couldn't write those checks. So you'll get some guys who will give you a little bit more team friendly deal because you're able to give them some money up front. Those are all super important things. So, again, I think extreme optimism here, but it's not optimism like giggity, you know, or like woo or pom poms. It's pissed off. They don't feel like they represented their team or their fans, and they believe they're better. So do I. It's going to be a fascinating game in Baltimore. And uh, tomorrow's podcast will come early because I got to jump a bird and fly to Baltimore. And uh, I'm going to be heading over to Delaware on Saturday, but I'll be, of course, back for the game, staying in Baltimore, but heading over to Delaware. And then um, back Saturday, you know, but back Sunday for the game. We're going to have tons of coverage for you. So please make sure you stay tuned in with us at the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. And additionally, please make sure, please, I'm asking you, make sure that you're always checking out what we do. 14 to 18 pieces of brand new content every day. SI.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders. There is literally no one covering the Raiders that gives you more free content than us. Nobody. And it's not even close. Please keep checking us out. Thanks, everybody.